什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？什么？So uh, to revise some material, uh, let's go straight ahead to revise our kidneys and its blood flow and then uh, our glomerulus here. So uh, for the kidneys, like general anatomy of the kidneys is like we are having the, let's start with the blood supply first of all. We are having renal vein and renal artery. So we are having renal arteries and consegmental artery. Then we are having interlobal arteries, arcuate arter arteries, then interlobular arteries. Here comes afferent arterial glomerulus, efferent arterial peritubular capillaries. They are all gathering into the interlobular vein, then arcuate vein interlobal vein and renal vein. This is the blood supply once again of the kidneys. The structure of the kidneys uh, to go through it will be uh, will be uh, a brief understanding of this. So we are having the uh, renal cortex, and we are having renal medulla. Uh, in the medulla, we are having renal papillas, right? Uh, it is all connected to the minor calyxes, then we are having major calyxes, and it creates all renal pelvis, and we are having then ureter, right? Ureters are going into the bladder, and from bladder, we are having uretra. And today we will talk about the urethra. However, also once again to go through the anatomy of the glomerulus. We are having here coming in the afferent arterial and meaning afferent arterial. Afferent when it is going inside, it's creating us like some the ball of the mm, ball of the vessels. Uh, glomerulus consists of the Bowman capsules, which is consist, as you know, from the histology parietal layer. Around the arterial, we are having the podocytes. Podocytes are some kind of um, cells which are having slits that they help to fil filtrate materials. Uh, and also, we do have mesangial cells, which are the uh, basic macrophages. Next to the Afferent arterial, we are having a distal granulated tubule, which consists of the macula tensa and just the glomerular sense, uh, cells, and they are ones who understand if there is normal blood or not. So they are macula tensa and uh, the glomerular cells are responsible for the BP. Okay, so this was the basic anatomy. If you are having any questions from the anatomy, uh, what we did on previous lessons, feel free to ask any time during the class. So, let's continue with the urethra. And urethra begins at the base of the bladder and ends within the external opening of on the perineum. And the pathways for urethra is always different for females and males because we're having different genital organs, right? Let's start with the uh, women. Um, mostly in women, the urethra is short and begins about it's, uh, around 4 cm long. It travels uh, mostly curved course uh, as it passes through the inferior, through the pelvic floor into the perineum, where again it passes through the deep perineal pouch and perineal membrane before uh, opening in the vestibule that lies between the labia minora. As you are seeing here, this is the bladder, this is the urethra schematically. Outside we are having external ureter sphincter, right? Uh, here we are having the perineal pouch, then perineal pouch membrane, 
and it is ground clitoris here located and it is finishing uh, at the level of the external uh, urethral office, office uh, behind the uh, clitoris, right? Also, uh, next to the external urethral office, we're having scans gland. And also we're having, uh, yeah, scans gland. They are called scans glands and it has their own ducts that are opening in the urethra. I will tell you that in a few minutes. Uh, so, uh, the female external urethral orifice, it is located uh, at the uh, vestibule of the vagina. So it is between, I uh, will have the photo of it. It, it, it is between the clitoris and the vagina. And we are having two small paraultral mucous glands that are producing the mucus, answer to your question. And they are called skin glands and they are associated with lower end of the urethra and they are having their own ducts and they are draining straight ahead to the uh, urethra, like external urethral office, office. So here, this is the photo of uh, our perineum and this is the gland uh, clitoris, right? Then we are having urethral opening and then we are having vaginal entrance, right? The space between the urethral opening and the vaginal entrance, it is called vestibule here. Okay. Questions? Yes or no? Okay, so wait a minute to record your sound. Can you ask through this microphone? <laughs> well, after this, right? <laughs> Please. Hi, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, what do the skin's glands do again? They are producing mucus. Okay. And they are meaning that mucus is lubricating the uh, whole vaginal tract, like oh. whole the clitoris and vagina or orifice. Let's say like that. We are talking about the skin gland that they are located next to the here. Like you can't see on this photo. I will go back. Yeah, here we are having here the skin gland. They are in the opening of the urethra, so they are producing the mucus. So while they are aiding the fluid to veg vaginal fluid, let's say, like the whole vagina crack, like this part wholly. Yeah, the hole is different, but like uh, this part, it's always like wet, right? So we are having different uh, glands there. And so this is called vaginal fluid still. So these skins are giving us mucus, mucus, can you turn it off? Uh, giving, uh, giving us some mucus and it is adding the fluid to the uh, whole vaginal fluid and also lubricating the mm, and like uh, external part of the orifice, your uh, urinary orifice, okay? I will leave this microphone here. So when you want to speak up, just click it until it will become green here and you can speak up. Okay. Questions regarding this? More? Okay, so one more thing to remember in this topic, it is that uh, it is really important to know that sh the wo women are having short urethra than men. Yeah, and we will explain why after finishing with the se several more slides. So now talking about the arterial supply and venous drainage of the female urethra. Mostly, as you remember from previous lesson, we're having pudental arteries, right? Internal pu uh, pudental and ve uh, vaginal arteries are uh, supplying the urethra and veins are following the uh, arteries and they are having the similar names, so it's the same. So we can say internal pudental arteries and uh, vaginal arteries and internal pudental veins and vaginal veins are draining and supplying the urethra. Okay. 
innovation from the Uretra, uh, for the Uretra it is like coming, uh, it has both visceral and somatic uh, offering innovation and mostly it is coming from the sacral region of S2 till S4 from the spinal ganglia. And here is the main why you should remember that women are having short uh, urethras because when they uh, when you get a bladder infection, you are in trouble, right? And we're having in women we're, and also in men we're having more ascending infections. And as the urethra is short, so it can fastly go ascend uh, to the urethra, and we're having infection. Okay. In men, we're also having the UTIs, but most commonly in women, right? And the bacteria that cause it, it is E. coli. Okay. Now talking about in men, as I mentioned, in women we had how, ma how long? Four. And in men, it is like 20 centimeters, okay? Uh, and it also bends twice along its course, not too much. Uh, it begins at the base of the bladder as the pass through uh, inferior through the prostate, it passes through the deep perineal pouch and uh, perineal membrane and immediately enters the root of the penis. So this is the whole course of uh, our male urethra and let's discuss it step by step. I hope you will see it better if I will do like that, right? So here is our bladder and uh, after the uh, bladder we're having first blood, it is pre-prostatic part of urethra. When it is entering the uh, prostate, we're having prostatic part of the urethra. When it after that, we are having membranous part of the uh, urethra, and here we are having uh, the bulbo-retal gland and duct opening in the membranous part of the urethra. After that, we are having spongy part of the urethra, and yeah, till the end, it is like spongy part, and it is opening in the external urethral orifice. Now, two more things that it is really important that um, where we are having pre-prostatic part of the urethra, there we are having internal urethral sphincter. It is consisting of smooth muscles. After that, we are having a uh, prostatic urethra, and then we are having external urethral sphincter that mostly consist of these, it is consist of these skeletal muscles, okay? <laughs> so, uh, the fact is that like, uh, they need it, like first one, it is for the prostate to uh, control the bladder and afterwards, like, it is like external one that we are able to we're having also two between uh, to understand that like you know it's all and we can control external one but they don't have it it uh, here or here you know because like uh, prostate gra uh, because the penis is used also for the sexual intercourse and they are having one way you know also sperm is coming out from this so external sphincter is f consists of the skeletal muscles and it is what the males can, um, male can, um, by their idea, yeah. And the internal one, they uh, they cannot control the word control. Wait a minute, wait. I will show you. I want to show you something more. Wait a minute. So women are having external sphincter here, uh, like urethral sphincter here. We don't have internal one. However, it is enough for us to, like you know, control the stuff and hold the urine. Okay, internal sphincter is like kind of. Mm,
internal sphincter is kind of above, but like no, it, it's not anatomic. It's just anatomic location contraction, nothing more. So mostly we're having like external sphincter here, but we are aware of what we're doing. And males are having internal and external. Okay, question more? Yes? Please use microphone for the questions. No, no question? Okay. Then continuing with this, um, as I've already mentioned, uh, as the urethra exists in, uh, in men in deep perineal pouch, it bends forward to course anteriorly in the root of the penis. When the penis is in flaccid situation, Urethra makes another bend, uh, this time inferiorly, and pa uh, when passing uh, from the root of the body of the penis. During the erection, it bends between the root and body of the penis, and it kind of disappears. Uh, the urethra in men is divided in several parts, and we already mentioned which parts it is divided. It, uh, it has pre prostatic parts, prostatic parts, Membranous and spongy part. Now let's discuss all of them step by step. So pre-prostatic part, it is called as intramural part. And the pre-prostatic part is the urethra, it's about one centimeter long. And it extends right ahead from the base of the bladder and uh, to the prostate and it is associated with the circular cutoff of smooth muscles um, and smooth muscle fibers and these are called internal urethra uh, sphincter. So uh, contraction of the sphincter prevents retrograde movement of the semen into the bladder during the ejaculation. So that's why we don't have this, okay? So it is located here, so the semen uh, won't get into the um, bladder. Talking about the prosthetic part, which is a bit longer, around 3 to 4 centimeters long, and it is uh, surrounded by the prostate. Uh, in this region, uh, the lumen of the urethra is marked by a longitudinal midline fold of the mucosa and these folds are called urethral crests. The depression of each side of the crest is the creating a urethral sinus. We will have the picture regarding that. Uh, the duct of the prostate ends into these two sinuses. So, as you see here, this is our prostate, right? And the in the middle, we are having the prostate uh, part, prostatic part of the urethra. As you see here, these are the these are the uh, smooth internal uh, urethral pictures, which consist of the smooth muscles, right? And they are. Uh, disabling the uh, urine and uh, salmon to go up backwards, retrograde movement uh, into the bladder. So in this case, we're having urethral crests, as you he see here, this is the urethral crest, and we are having urethral sinuses, right? And in these sinuses, we are having the prostate uh, glands that are opening, you know, as you see here. So prostate is having the glands, we will discuss in genital urinary system after several lessons and we will collide both materials together. So yeah, they are, are opening like the, our prostate uh, glands. So midway along its length, uh, the urethral crest is enlarged uh, to form somehow circular elevation and it is called seminal colliculus. Seminal colliculus is used to determine the position of the prostate gland during the transurethral transaction of the prostate. This is the surgery when during the uh, benign prostatic cancer or the malignant prostate cancers. So he, see, it has widened up right here. 
this part. Also, in the prosthetic part, we're having a small blind ended pouch that it is called prosthetic utricum. Uh, and should, like, women are having kind of similarity with that. And there we are having, having uh, opening on the seminal colliculus. On each side of the prostatic uricle uh, is the opening of the ejaculatory duct of the male reproductive system. Therefore, the connection between the urinary system and reproductive system is happening in the prostatic part of urethra, right? So, salmon is coming out from here, right? Uh, and it is all going back down, right? In the same tract. And that's why we need this kind of valve here to, uh, for be to uh, not to have the retrograde flow of the of the salmon. Now let's start talking about like our membranous part of the um, of our uh, urethra and. Uh, and membranous part of the urethra, it is the narrowest part of the urethra. Uh, and again, it is uh, down in deep uh, pouch, a uh, perineal pouch. Uh, during its transit through this pouch, uh, the urethra in both an in woman is uh, surrounded by the skeletal muscles. And these skeletal muscles are creating external urethral sphincter. We are having the similarities in this, okay? So this is like the sphincter what we are talking about. Like it is located in the membranous part of the membranous part of the mm, uh, urethra, and it is like the skeletal muscle. And we can um, we can work on that, right? It depends on our ability. Yes, question, please. Yeah, microphone, please. Uh, Hello. Yeah. How how long is the membranous part? We will talk about this. It is around. Uh, okay, it's not written here. It is around five six centimeters. Not quite much, you know, because the uh, to sum up, we should have all, all together twenty centimeters. Okay. So once again, to repeat, we are having uh, the. Uh, um, Internal sphincter mostly located in the. It is located in what kind of uh, urethra? Preprostatic part. Yeah. And the membranous part, we are having external sphincter, okay? And the final part is the longest one. All the other centimeters are left is in the spongy part. And we are having a uh, spongy urethra, which is surrounded by the erectile tissue because erect, uh, it is located in the penis, and penis consists of the corpus spongiosum, and this is one which is the erectile part. Uh, it is enlarged to form a bulb at the base of the penis, and again at the end of the penis to form a navicular fossa. We will see the photos of it. And there we are having two bulbo retrograns in the deep perineal pouch that are part of the male reproductive system. Uh, and they open into the uh, spongy urethra. The external uh, urethral orifice is the, uh, in the sagittal seat at the end of the uh, penis. Okay? So here, this is the photo that we already discussed partly. This is our spongy uh, urethra. And as you see here, when, it is, uh, when the penis is flaccid in this situation, it bends, uh, this is the second bend, one first bend, and this is the second bend. It bends two times. When it is a uh, penis is in erectile position, it bends one time because this bend won't happen. And as I've mentioned, it is like uh, surrounded with the uh, spongiosum and the erectile tissue that it is known, not shown here. And 
at the uh, base of the at the base of the penis, it is um, becoming uh, like a bulb, and it is called navicular fossa here. And then we're having external urethral orifice, right? Do you have any questions regarding this? Uh, yes, no questions? Please, microphone. Um, why does the fossa, like, why do, what's the point of the fossa at the end? It's an atomic position like that. So, it has, it doesn't have any major pathological function or anything. Okay. Yeah, it's just anatomic stuff. Okay, thank you. So, um, now let's discuss two congenital pen, uh, penile abnormalities. It's called uh, hypospadiasis and epispadiasis. Hypospadiasis, it is abnormal opening of penile urethra on the ventral under surface due to failure uh, of urethral for, uh, fault to fuse. So if the urethra should open in the middle, it is on the ventral surface, on the lower surface, okay? I will make it bigger. Can you see it now? No, the colors are so bright. That's why. However, you are having the presentation, you can see it. And hypospadiasis is uh, more common than epispadiasis. And it is sometimes associated with the inguinal her uh, hernias, cryptorchidis, or cordy. Uh, and it can be seen also in 5-alpha reductase deficiency. And talking about epispadiasis, it is abnormal, again, opening of the urethra, you know, on the dorsal surface of the, uh, uh, it's on the dorsal surface of the uh, penis, and mostly, uh, it is less common because uh, hypospadiasis is most com more common. Symptoms are the same, everything is the same. We are doing operation on that to make it normal. Another, uh, to sum up all the mm, uh, materials that we talked about the bladder and urethra, uh, we are having uh, the genital, like some several clinical uh, cases. It is like when we are having renal, um, renal injury. Uh, it mostly it is presents with bruises, flank pain or hematuria and it caused by direct blows or the uh, low rib uh, fractures. When we're having bladder injury, again it is with the hematuria. Hematuria is the presence of the blood in the uh, urine. We're having suprapubic pain and or difficult in voiding. Uh, and it is happening because of the maybe direct uh, injury of the bladder wall uh, or uh, the injury of the neck of the bladder or, or maybe the pelvic fracture. Whenever we are having urethral injury, it occurs mostly in the males and we are having blood at urethral meatus, hematuria or difficult voiding take into notice that we should differentiate this from prostatic diseases. Uh, and in that case, pro in the urethral injury, prostatic uh, urethral catheterization is contraindicated. Uh, why we're having injury? We're having some kind of uh, blunt trauma maybe, or a well, back fascia may be torn down, okay? So if you're having questions uh, regarding this, or we're having the uh, break for uh, 10 minutes, and then we're coming back and starting the embryology part.
Okay guys, let's continue with our class. And if you can see I won't switch off the lights, right? So uh now we're continuing with the embryology of uh urinary tract. And uh we should all know that our kidneys and urethra and everything was uh, is developed from our urogenital system, like for like whole urogenital system is derived from intermediate mesenchyme. It's the same as mesoderm, uh, and it the intermediate mesenchyme like mesoderm is derived from the dorsal body wall of the embryo. This mesenchyme uh, is primarily responsible for formation of the kidneys and internal genital and their ducts. So if we're he seeing here, so we're having like this part. This is like intermediate meso uh, mesenchyme, like mesoderm. And on its lateral side, it is having lateral mesoderm, right? This is our notochord neural groove and embryonic ectoderm uh, when we're having like folding of the embryo in the horizontal plane the mesenchyme is uh, carried ventrally and loses its connection with the summit otherwise like before the bending it was connected to the summit and a longitudinal elevation of the mes uh, mesoderm uh, is created and it's called the urogenital ridges and this urogenital ridges is forming um, it forms on each side the dorsal aorta the part of the urogenital ridge giving us the uh, rise to the urinary system called nephrogenic cord and the part gives us rise to the genital system it is called gonadal ridge so whenever we're ha like this is the section how we are watching it. So here we are having seeing like the folding and we saw this is our neural crest cells, summits and by the folding as I mentioned it was detached from the summit and we have developed like the dorsal aorta and nephrogenic cords, right? In the middle it is our nerve cord and this is umbilical yolk sac. When the embryo is developing, uh, what we see, uh, the umbilical uh, yolk cell is smaller size. But that was created like the uh, lateral fold. Also, we do have a mid gut already developed, and a nephrogenic co cord uh, is becoming larger and larger. And we do see around the nephrogenic cord the urogenital ridges. And between the uh, nephrogenic cords, we're having the notochord located. Okay. The urinary system begins to develop before the genital system uh, does. And it consists of the several organs that we already anatomically discussed. It is kidneys, which produce excreted urine, it's ureters which convey urine from the kidneys to urinary bladder, it's urinary bladder which stores the urine temporarily, and it's urethra which discharges the urine from the bladder externally. Also, we have like three sets of uh, successive kidneys uh, that develop in the human embryo. And first set that we're having is it mesonephron. It is rudimentary and non-function. After that, we will have the secondary set, which is mesonephron, and is well developed and functions briefly during the early fatal period. And then we're having third set, which is called metanephron. And the metanephrons are forming the uh, permanent kidneys. Okay. So let's start with the rudimentary kidneys, and these are uh, pronephrons. Uh, they are bilater uh, bilaterally uh, located uh, mostly uh, during the first week of embryologic development. They are represented by a few cell clusters and tubal uh, structures in the neck region. They run 
cowardly and open into the Qualcomm and they soon degenerate. So we don't see it in the human at all. So as you see here, this is like our mini embryo, right? I will switch off the light maybe a little here. See that. Yeah, this is our uh, embryo. And as you see here, this is our nephrogenic cord right in the pink. Like this part here. No, I'm showing incorrectly. I can't see here. So this part here, it is our uh, nephrogenic cord, right? This one, and it is the same here. Okay, what I've showed before, it was like spinal cord. From the side, I couldn't see that. And as you see here, at first, like we're having rudimentary part, and it is here. This is pronephrons that degenerate soon, and that's why it is dashed line here, right? Okay, even on the schematic view, you see here the uh, pronephrons, right? Okay. After that, we are having mesonephrons. But they are larger, they are elongate, and they are at least having extratory function a little bit. Uh, and they appear late in first week, uh, and they created, they are elongation of the pronephron to the caudal part. They are well developed and function as an intermediate kidney for ap approximately four weeks until the permanent kidneys develop at, and function. They consist around 10 to 15 glomerulosis and tubules. And the mesonephronic tubules open in, into the bilateral mesonephric ducts, uh, and, uh, which were originally the pronephronic ducts. Mesonephronic ducts then open into the cloaca. They generate teeth towards the end of the first trimester. However, their are meta uh, metanephric tubules becoming the efferent ductus of the testes. So the, uh, when there will be the question uh, regarding the mm, efferent uh, ductus of the testes, we can say that these are the created from the mesonephronic ducts. Okay? So to see the photo here, we are uh, seeing the mesonephronic duct. This is like this all in pink. These ones are mesonephrons. And the ducts uh, and the tubules that you are seeing here, it is like mesonephronic ducts. Okay? And this is the cloaca where they are opening the yellowish color. Uh, yeah. Uh, so these are like different or pictures of the mesonephron, how they are uh, developing during the stages. So in this photo, in the first photo, we are seeing, uh, we can see the lateral overview of the fifth uh, week embryo. Uh, and here we can see the mesonephron uh, and uretric bud. This is the uretric bud from which we are having the mesonephron coming out. And this is the primordium of the metanephron. In the photo B, we are seeing the transverse section of the embryo. And here it is shown the urogenic uh, cord from which we are having mesonephric tubules developed. On these two pictures, we are having uh, like the development of the mesonephronic uh, tubules between the uh, fifth to eight, eleventh weeks here. And as you see, uh, this was uh, which structure? This was like this, uh, nephrogenic stru uh, structure and then mesonephric duct, right? So you are seeing here how we uh, have created mesonephric vesicle and mesonephric duct together. And after uh, till and next to the 11th week, they are combining together and see how they are combining. And this all is like uh, happening in the urogenital ridge, right? The urogenital ridge, if you don't remember, it was like, uh, this was like here, like this part, this small pinkish part below the nephrogenic cord, okay?
So mesonephronic ducts have several adult derivatives and one of them we already mentioned and that's ductus deferens and also ejaculatory ducts and seminal glands. Um, we finished with mesonephron. Do you have any questions regarding that? No? Okay, then continuing with the metanephron. Metanephron is a primordial of the permanent kidneys. Uh, developing it develops starts at the week of five uh, and becomes functional after four weeks. So around five plus four, it, it will be around nine weeks, right? And uh, urine formation continues throughout the fat life. Uh, it excretes uh, the urine into amniotic cavity and mix with the amniotic fluid, the, the urine. So this is the only case when the urine is useful, guys. So as you see here, uh, this is like our a uh, lateral view of the permanent kidneys and all the p uh, picture A here we're having fifth week, uh, fifth week embryo and you see here that we're having a uretric bud already developed when we're having metanephrogenic blastema then we're having mesonephrine duct right in the nephrogenic cord and these are mesonephrons and we do have permanent uh, pronephron here. And all the pro uh, picture B, C, D and E, we see how the kidneys are developed. So first of all, we are having uh, the mesonephric duct. On the mesonephric duct, we are uh, having the stalk of uretric bud. And on the stalk of the uretric bud, we uh, have uretric bud and mesonephrogenic blastoma. Then, this stalk of uretric bud is uh, decreasing in size and we are uh, creating the renal pelvis in the uh, metanephrogenic plasma. After that, it is multiplying and creating for us the minor calyxes and major calyxes and renal pelvis. And after some time, it is even more developing and giving us the whole uh, system and everything this is happening in the metanephrogenic blastema uh, and as it is multiplying like our uretric bud uh, and stalk uh, we are having lobes of the kidneys and grooves between uh, the kidneys right so uh, the permanent kidneys uh, can develop from two sources it is uretric bud Let's summarize what I've talked. Okay, yes, question. There is question. Let me see you guys. Yes. So on this image, the mesonephros and the nephrogenic cord are pointing to the same place. What's the difference? So that's slide 18. Okay, go to slide 18, right? Yes, please. Mm, yeah, yet we uh, are 18, okay, it's here. Yeah. So what was the question? The mesonephros and the nephrogenic cord, what's the difference? Because it's pointing to the same place, the annotations are in the same place. Can you show me because... Uh, yeah. Okay, it would be better for you to show me and I will explain that. Yeah. That's okay. No, no, no. Okay, we are having mesonephrons. This is like uh, both of them together called mesonephrons. But we are having. I will tell it out loud, right? But this one is like pinkish, like pinkish. It is duct, and it is like uh, in the pink. It is like a nephrogenic cord. It is divided, you know. So the nephrogenic cord is the. Yeah, it is a part of the mesonephrons. Okay. So it is co uh, together. Okay. However, like it is divided. Like this one is like dark pink. Okay. It is like the nephrogenic cord. And inside we're having mesonephrons. Duct, 
and it's of mesonephron like this, smaller kidneys. Okay, so guys, the question was like that. So when we're ha uh, it was mentioned there that if you, I don't know if you see or not here, so mesonephron, uh, the arrows are showing on the light pink and dark pink. So it is divided. Um, uh, the uh, mesonephron dark uh, duct is the light pinkish way shown on the photo. And nephrogenic cord, it is like the uh, dark, uh, dark pink, okay? Okay, continuing. So, what I explained, uh, we should, uh, let's summarize what I've said right now. So, the kidneys uh, are having, we are having uh, two sources uh, from where we can develop the kidneys. We are having uretric bud, which is metanephric diverticulum. And we are having meta uh, nephrogenic blastema. This is metanephric ma uh, mass of the mesenchyme. And also we are having uretric ba bud. Uh, it's a diverticulum like outgrowth from uh, the mesonephric duct near the entrance uh, into the cloaca. The meta nephrogenic blastema is derived from the caudal part of the nephrogenic cord. Okay, so this is exactly what I've talked right now. Do you guys have any questions? No? Okay. As the uretric bud elongates, uh, it penetrates in the metanephrogenic blastema, a metanephric mass of the mesenchyme. The stalk of the uretric bud becomes ureters. Uh, the cranial part of the bud undergoes repetitive branching, forming the branches which differentiate into the collecting tubules and then the major calyxes and minor calyxes. So this is the photo here, what I've talked about. So ureters are derived from the stalk of the ureteric bud and others are then divided into the major and minor calyxes. At the end of uh, each arched collecting uh, tubule, induces cluster of the mesenchyme cells in, uh, in the metanephrogenic blastema to form a small metanephric vessel, vesicle, which becomes metanephric tubule. Uh, this tubule, uh, and like in this tubule, the final part will be the glomerulus. Uh, and the tubules then differentiate into proximal and distal Congulated tubules, uh, and we are having uh, nephrogenic nephron loop, which is ne later is called uh, loop of Handle. And together, uh, glomerulus and its capsule is creating our nephron. Each disconvolated tubule contacts an arch collecting tubule, and tubules become confluited. So let's see several photos for that. So exactly what we've talked about that right now, let's make it a bit bigger. So we're having a uh, capsule of the kidney, then we're having a cell cluster, and it is like a metanephrogenic blastema. Then we're having from here striped collecting tubule. Uh, around it, it is our uh, metanephric vesicle and arch collecting tubules, right? After some time, um, we see uh, the metanephric tubules uh, and like this is everything is happening in the mesenchyme. We see how metanephric tubules has developed and it got uh, connected to the um, arch collecting tubules, right? And the metanephric vesicle, uh, vesicle is staying the same. Afterwards, after some time, we are seeing how the... Guys, if you're having questions, please ask out loud otherwise. We're having, uh, as you see, uh, the developing of the embryo, so uh, we're having development of the kidneys also. And as you see, these were uh, our metanephric tubules, right? It has developed, and it become uniferous tubules. Then we have development of the metanephric tubules also, which are joining with the arched uh, collecting tubules. And after several time, we already uh, developed like this tried collecting tubule 
uh, we had this talk, uh, this token related tubule, proximal cone related tubule, and also we do have the glomerulus, and everything has the blood supply, and this is how the normal nephron was created. So, uh, metanephron, in the metronephron, I already mentioned the uniferous tubules, and they consist of the two embryological parts. One part, it is a nephron, derived from the metanephrogenic blastema, and another one, it is a collecting tubule derived from the uretric bar. Between 10 to 18th week, the number of glomerulus are increasing gradually and then increase rapidly at the end of the uh, 32 weeks. And this is when we're having almost ready our kidneys. Okay? Uh, now I have summarized in these two slides. I won't go it once again, but all these 26 uh, uh, slides were summarized in three or five, uh, like several key points, which you can go uh, without me. So, like pronephrons, mesonephrons, metanephrons, what they are doing, at which embryologic uh, period we are having them here. And again, one more time, the photo that I've showed you before and we already discussed. And now we're having one disease which is called our Potter sequence or Potter's disease. It is when we're having oligohydramniosis. It is when, uh, if you know, in the, uh, in the placenta we are having amniotic fluid, right? You know that. And when we're having oligohydramniosis, meaning that we're having low amount of the amniotic fluid, this is due that we're having compression of the uh, developing, uh, actually it causes the compression of the developing fetus and we are having the deformities, uh, facial def uh, deformities like the uh, low set ears, uh, flaccid nose, compression of the chest and and sometimes uh, there is uh, aspiration of the uh, fluid and we are having um, pulmonary hypoplasia. And why it is caused and why it is connected to the kidneys, right? It is caused by placental insufficiency and thus we are having reduced renal output. Or it is caused by uh, obstruction of the uh, tracts, urinary tract, or bilateral renal agenesia. So if, we, if, if the, in the embryology period we, don't, we have not developed the kidneys normally, we might have the Porter sequence. And the mnemonic for that is where uh, babies who can't pee in the utero, they, uh, they develop Porter syndrome. P with P. Porter has like its own symptoms and how to remember the Porter sequence uh, symptoms. It is like mnemonic again here. Potter and P for pulmonary hyperplasia, O for uh, oligohydramniosis that triggers the Potter sequence, T for twisted face, T for uh, twisted skin, extremity defects, and renal failure in uterus. Clear this part? Questions? Okay. If you don't have any questions, that then we're continuing. Okay, so uh, also our kidneys in the uterus are divided into the mm, into the uh, loops, uh, and uh, we are calling them fatal kidney loops. The, uh, uh, the lobulation usually disappears at the end of the first year of infancy as nephrons increase and grow in size. Nephron formation is complete at the birth except the premature infants. And as you see here on the photo, we markedly can identify them that there are uh, lobulations, right? So this one it is adrenal glands that you had questions on previous lesson. Uh, and as you see, adrenal glands uh, sits right ahead on the kidneys and there is no division or nothing similar, right? They are together. And down there, these are the kidneys of the uh, newborn child. 
neonates, uh, and we're having like levels of kidneys, and as you see here, and these are the small ureters. So, uh, during the um, development, uh, the kidney structure, not structure, but mostly position, is changing. Uh, initially, the primordial permanent kidneys lie uh, close to each other into uh, the pelvis, ventrally to the sacrum, as you see here. So they are too close to each other. And next to the bladder, ventral surface of the uh, sacrum, right? These are the mesonephrons here. And inside they are having no, uh, kidneys. There, these are the gonads. Okay. However, uh, as uh, the abdomen and pelvic gro grow, as the child is growing, the kidneys gradually relocate to the abdomen and they move farther from apart. So it was the first photo, how it was normally. And after that, if you're seeing, uh, the uh, uh, child has grown and we are having like kidneys here. They are moved far away and the gonads has descended, right? Here. So because in, in advance, in previous photo, we had gonads who were like even upper than the kidneys. As the child is growing and it, uh, we are having a uh, ascent of the kidneys uh, slow by slow. And you see that we already formed like renal arteries here, super renal glands are on, in, on its normal position and the gonads have even descended down. Uh, Initially, the helium of each kidney, where blood vessels, ureters, nerves are entering and leaving, they are always facing to the ventral side. However, as the kidneys are relocating, ascending, they are rotately, uh, they are rotating uh, almost 90 degrees. By the nine weeks, the helium are direct anteromedially located, and this is official location of the helium and kidneys are becoming retroperitoneal organ uh, and they are located on the posterior abdominal wall, right? So, uh, talking about changes in the blood supply. We all officially know the normal um, blood supply of the kidneys. However, during, um, during the changes in kidney position, they receive uh, their blood supply from vessels that are close to them. Initially, renal arteries are uh, branching uh, of the common iliac arteries. Later, kidneys receive their blood supply from the distal end of the aorta. When they are relocated even higher location, they receive new branches from aorta. And normally, the caudal branches of the renal vessels undergo uh, degeneration and they disappear. So final point it is that they receive blood supply from the uh, renal arteries. So these are the photos, how they are getting the uh, blood supply. So when they were in the pelvic region, they had like their blood supply was coming from the common iliac arteries through the renal artery into the kidneys. Afterwards, again, common iliac artery and like renal arteries. Then already it, it is like renal arteries and they, uh, sorry, it was uh, aorta and then, and then we are having like the renal arteries, right? So when uh, the position of the uh, kidneys become fixed, uh, they come into contact with the suprarenal glands in, in the ninth week. So before they are apart and at the nine weeks they are collaborating and they are becoming the pair. Of course, okay. Do you have any questions regarding this? No? Okay. And now we are continuing with the development of the urinary bladder. Uh, as you remember, I mentioned, I guess, this, that we are having urogenital sinus, right? And urogenital sinus is divided into three parts. 
uh, visceral part that forms most of the ur uh, urinary bladder in continuous with the allen toys. I will show, see the pictures of that. Uh, we are having pelvical part that becomes the urethra in the neck of the bladder, uh, the prostatic part of the urethra in the males, and the entire urethra in the females. And pelvic part that grows towards the genital tubercule. And this is the primordium of the penis or clitoris. So once again, if on the, during the question, if we will have uh, during the quiz, if we will have the question that um, from where we are developing the um, this prosthetic part of urethra males and in trial part of the females, what you will answer? Yeah, and then we are having phallic point that gives us like the primordium of the clitoris and penis. And here, this is like the front of it. So this is the rectum. That rectum came from which part, guys, if you remember, I mentioned and really and has not asked this, this question. This is like a uh, uh, cloaca. What's cloaca, right? Cloaca is our uh, rectum, finally. Then we're having phallic part, pelvic part, and visceral part. And this is uh, urogenital sinus, and it is continuous of the allantois. After that, um, the bladder is continuous with the allantois. Allantois soon constricts and becomes a thick fibrous cord. It's called urachus. It extends from the apex of the bladder to the umbilicus. So the umbilicus that we're having right now, it was ex urachus, former urachus. In adults, urachus is represented by the medial umbilical ligament. Okay. So this is the final pictures uh, that we will see uh, regarding the our development of the uh, urogenital sinus and the bladder. So rectum came from the cloaca. Then we are having rectal uh, septum. This is our allen toys that it is in neonates and uh, in the embryologic period it is our umbilicus and from the uh, choice we are having developed our ureters, urinary bladder, uh, metanephrons and metanephrons, right? After some time it is becoming already uh, more located like in human, adult humans. So we see the urogenital uh, sinus pelvic part then we, are, we should see here uh, the mesonephric ducts, which are continuing with the pelvic part of urogenital sinus, and normal, uh, and the kidneys, and above the kidneys there are gonads. And now let's see how in males, in females and males, we are having this all. Uh, and this is urethra, and which uh, toys has degenerated, and we are having urachus. And these are our uh, metanephrons, like already developed in metanephrons. So the epithelium, most of the male urethra and the entire female urethra is derived from the endoderm of the urogenital sinus. In males, uh, the distal part of the urethra in the glands of the penis is derived from a solid cord of the ectodermal cells that grow inwards uh, the tip of the glands and join the rest of the sponge urethra. Uh, the epithelium of the terminal part of the urethra is derived from the surface ectoderm. And the connective tissue and the smooth muscles uh, in the urethra in both sexes are derived from the splanchic mesenchyme. This was it for today. If you are ha having any questions, please feel free to answer, ask. I will send this one also. Let me finish the...